Hey, what's going on everyone? Indy here with Ultimate Tour Reviews. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do three very simple jobs on your first gen Tacoma. Of course, these are very important as you want to make sure you change fluids. As I've always heard, fluids are cheaper than parts. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is change the rear differential oil. You really only need a couple of things to do this. It's not complicated at all. Of course, I'll have links in the description, guys, for everything you're going to need and all the fluids as well, too. Um, for the first job here, chain the rear differential, definitely recommend you have gloves for all three of these jobs here. Uh, if you're wondering, there is a mid-torque impact wrench here. Both my bolts were actually pretty, you know, stuck on there pretty good. I had to pull an impact to get those off. Of course, a mid-torque took them off, no problem. And of course, for any of the fluid changes, you're also going to need some type of fluid reservoir or something to, you know, pour all the fluid into. I got just a nice little uh, fluid pan here that works really well, and I can pour it into one of the used jugs there, no problem. Uh, so what you're going to need for changing the rear differential is you're going to need a 24 socket. Uh, you're also going to want to probably have a half inch ratchet as well too. I'm using a mid torque that I use to just pop off those bolts, no problem. Moving on to the transmission, you're going to need some, of course, ETF fluid. Uh, you're going to need a number uh, 14 socket. Uh, I chose a deep socket. You don't necessarily need a deep socket for it, but I would highly recommend to use an extendable ratchet to give yourself a little bit more leverage. Now, mine wasn't on there too good. I was able to pop it off with this ratchet, no problem, but having a bit of an extension of that ratchet helps you pop it off just a little bit easier. You're also going to want a funnel that is like this that goes down to a nice fine point that's pretty long. I'll show you that why in just a couple of minutes here, as you definitely want to be able to access that where the uh, dipstick is. You're going to refill the transmission fluid there. And finally, changing out spark plugs. Mine were definitely pretty worn, and I uh, wanted to change those out. When I went to Advanced Auto Parts, I said, just give me the best ones you can possibly throw in there. So I did NGK, pretty much my favorite brand of spark plugs. And then, of course, I will say you're going to want to pick out a, um, a uh, definitely a spark plug socket with, uh, you want to have one that has, you know, that little boot or that little, um, what would you call this in there, that little bumper in there. Um, you want to have that, you want to pick out one that has definitely a longer boot. As you can see, this one, that boot is way back in there, and this one, it is a lot more forward. This one is the one you're going to want to pick. Of course, these are both 5A sockets, or 5A sockets here. Definitely pick out one that has a much larger boot in it, because this one, of course, will not work in there, as those sockets are pretty far down. You're also going to need a number 12 socket, and I'll show you why in just a bit. Um, some of those uh, ignition cables in there are going to give you an issue on the third uh, cylinder back, and I'll show you how to get around that. And then, of course, you're also going to want a one-inch extension to really get that socket down into those cylinders. And then, of course, you can just reuse the same exact ratchet that you used uh, for the transmission flush. So let me show you where the rear differential is and how to get that changed. Again, all three of these are really easy. You just got to know a couple of tricks to do them. Really not a big deal. All right, so looking from the back of the truck here, you're going to see where I changed that fluid. I tried to clean it off as best I could, but of course it stays kind of stuck on there. All right, so here is going to be our fill bolt, and below it is going to be our drain bolt. Both those bolts are exactly the same. And remember, always take off your fill bolt first. In case some of you have some issue uh, where you can get the drain bolt off but not the fill bolt, well, you're going to be kind of stuck there because you can't refill that differential then. So always start with the highest bolt first, and work your way down. You don't want to pull that bolt off, you get the fluid out, and then you kind of can't get that bolt off for some reason. It's not going to be a fun time. So get the fill bolt off, then get the drain bolt off. You're going to drain it out. It's going to be a good amount of fluid there. I believe it's about 1.7 quarts. I might be wrong on that one, but I'll double check. Uh, that's all mine really used. And of course, I used about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 quarts to kind of flush that rear differential out in the fill while that while the drain valve is still open. No big deal. This is really simple and really quick to do here. Now let's show you the transmission. All right, so the best way to get the transmission is you're going to want to jack up the truck. I like to go from the driver's side down, and it's going to be right under here. So looking from the driver's side door is going to be right here. We're going to look right here as our transmission. Our transmission pan is right here. And right there is going to be your bolt. Now, when you pull that bolt off, you're not going to drain the entire transmission. My transmission was a bit overflowed on this truck, so I got about 1.5 quarts out, and I only need to add back in one quart. So I had about half a quart extra in there that should not have been in there. And of course, that's not really a big deal, but I didn't want to run the transmission overflowed. 
especially after I bought it. So yeah, it's kind of recommended to kind of change that transmission fluid once every, you know, 40, 50,000 miles. And of course, you're just going to keep diluting the old fluid over and over and over again. And uh, if you want to do a full service, which I probably will do here in the next year or so, I'll get a video on that out eventually. But that's about it for draining the fluid. Take that bolt off. You're going to drain about eh, 1 to 1 1.5 quarts out. And uh, I think the I think it's a total of like 2.7, 3-ish quarts. Uh, I'll double check that to make sure I'm accurate on that one, but it's not a lot of transmission fluid there. All right, and let's find that transmission dipstick. It's going to be back in here. Uh, once you find it the first time, it's really not too hard to get to it again. You can see it right back in there. It's a little dipstick back there. Let me set this light down here. You can reach in right here to get to it. You're going to, it's going to be a little tab on the bottom. You need to push away. And that dipstick will pull then right out. So right there's that dipstick. As you can see, there's that tube back there. And that's what you're going to use to put your funnel in to then refill that transmission fluid. Of course, you're going to want to not have the engine running. I've seen some people on YouTube have the engine running. I don't like sticking my hand anywhere in an engine while it's running. But you can, of course, turn the engine back on, drive around a little bit, make sure you have enough fluid in there, make sure that, of course, wherever you took out, you try to put that much back in. But double check the dipstick. Don't put too much. And don't put too little back in. And that's all you need to do is put the funnel right in there, add the fluid, and you're good to go. That's a good transmission fluid uh, change. You kind of change the fluid, you know, partially. If you pull the pan down, you can change the fluid entirely and, of course, change that filter. But, of course, it's just a quick way to do it. Not the best way, but at least you're doing something by putting some new fluid in there and getting some rid of the old fluid. All right, then moving on to changing out the plugs. Right here is going to be your spark plug boots. Of course, this is the 2.4 cylinder. It's slightly different on the other engines for the truck as well, too. But your hardest one is going to be this one right here. I've got a good trick for you to get this one out. The other three are very easy. You just pull that boot up. You can put your socket down in there, pull the old... Uh, spark plug out and then put your new one back in there. Make sure to do that all by hand. You do not want to strip out any of the threads in those spark plug boots. What I found though to get that third one out is very simple. You're going to want to take this bolt off right here. That's your number 12 bolt. That'll then allow you to maneuver these wires over a little bit and then you can then pull that third spark plug boot just kind of up and over to the left. And then there's also another trick too. Right over here, it's buried below here a little bit. But when you pull the fourth one, uh, pull that fourth spark plug out. Let me see if I can show it to you right here. You can detach this little clip here that holds the wires together. That'll give you just a little bit extra wire to pull that third boot just up and over and be able to get all these out without actually taking anything apart other than that one bolt and I'm clipping that one cable there. Super easy to do. Uh, I did all three of these myself in about 35 minutes. Really wasn't a big deal. Uh, if you got any questions, let me know, but this is really easy to do on the 2.4 cylinder engines. And honestly, we've seen the spark plugs, you know, after I took the old ones out. Yeah, the old ones are definitely pretty dirty. I know they're not original. I'm pretty sure that originally I think they used, I think, Denso spark plugs in these. And the ones I had in here were Bosch. So I would assume the ones that were in here probably put around 100,000 miles. And what I've got now in this truck is 197,000 miles on this truck now. So that's about it. Really not too hard for all three of those jobs, but definitely key maintenance items to do. So guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a great day.